Yep, I'm not able to do that. Yeah, that one. Yeah, well, well, folks. Um, there's not many of us here at the moment, but we are recording at the moment. So uh, rather than waste your valuable time, I'll, uh, well, we might kick off and um, if others are gonna join us, then, uh, um, then they can always catch up on anything they missed from the recording. So um, thanks for being here. Um, and by way of introduction, I'm Mark Brackenreg, if you, if you haven't met me before. Um, and um, I'm here wearing a few of my voluntary hats all, all coming to play at the same time. So uh, I'm here principally as uh, the co-convener of, <coughs> of the National Outdoor Education Conference, but also um, as an Outdoors New South Wales board member and uh, state representative for Outdoor Education Australia. And, uh, and joining me is, uh, is Liz Horn, who is also on the uh, conference organising committee. So um, yeah, so thanks Liz for joining us today, but also more importantly for all your great work um, on the organising committee. Um, and, so excuse me, yeah. So uh, just if I can uh, begin by paying respects to uh, to elders past, present and emerging. Um, and um, we all come, come to you, or we're all in different places at the moment, but like to acknowledge uh, the lands of, of the people wherever we are and, uh, and the, uh, the indigenous culture there. So uh, principally today, I'd like to give you a bit of a rundown on um, the National Outdoor Education Conference. Um, and answer any questions that you might have. So Liz, especially if you can uh, help me out with that, if any chats come through, um, I'm finding it hard to, to follow that at this end. So um, if you can just let me know as question, any questions happen to come in. Uh, to begin with, I guess the, the national, sorry, national conference. Um, uh, is, uh, is rotating, so it's held uh, through Outdoor Education Australia and uh, run in a different state on a rotating basis. As you can see there though, um, it hasn't been in New South Wales for a very long time. It's uh, 24 years, so the best part of a quarter of a century soon it's been uh, last in New South Wales at, uh, at Collaroy. And, um, and then it was almost a decade before that. Um, so it doesn't, doesn't come around to New South Wales all that often. So, uh, you know, a great opportunity to, uh, uh, yeah, take part in, in, in a sort of rare opportunity for, for people from New South Wales. And our theme this year is uh, reconnecting. Uh, we think really people, outdoor educators around the country are really craving that sense of reconnection after our experience of the last 18 months and reconnecting for the future because we're, we're sort of looking to, to move forward and, and have a sense of a forward momentum. So uh, to, to look at a few, few of our keynotes and then, so what I might do is um, go th run through some of the keynotes that we've got, run through a little about, about our concurrent um, presentations and our pre and post uh, workshops. Um, so the keynotes to begin with, um, a lot of you will be familiar with Yvonne Weldon, um, who is the chairperson of the Metropolitan Land Aboriginal Council and pretty high profile. If any of you were watching any of the Australia Day um, tele television broadcasts this year, you would have seen uh, Yvonne uh, doing the, the Welcome to Country um, for New South Wales and, and I think it might have been national in fact. So. Um, She's a proud Wiradjuri woman and um, uh, as well as sort of a welcome to country, I can expect that uh, she'll be challenging us with um, how we can introduce um, you know, authentic learning about Indigenous culture into our programs. Uh, next, uh, sort of opening up our, uh, our keynotes is Parsi Salberg. 
and uh, Parsi is sort of a world world recognised um, educator. He headed up um, the the Finnish. He was the director general of the Finnish education system. Uh, along the way, um, Parsi has uh, uh, been the professor at, of uh, practice at Harvard University. He's um, been a senior education specialist at the World Bank. Um, he's sort of known as, a, as an international school improvement activist, and um, he'll, be, uh, he'll be challenging us. Um, we're actually going to have a few people on the couch responding to, um, uh, to Parsi, and so one of them, those is uh, David de Caravallo, if I'm probably mispronouncing that, but he's the CEO of ACARA, who are responsible for national curriculum, education curriculum. And so he will be responding to that. We'll also have uh, responding um, to some of his thoughts will be um, Sharon Goldfeld. We'll also have a presentation the next day. So Sharon is a paediatrician um, based in Melbourne. And um, um, so she's obviously got an interest in, uh, in child health. She's, done a lot of work on the effects of um, COVID-19 on, uh, on child development and she's also a, a proponent of the importance of education in, um, um, in childhood health and so she's a, a policy advisor in, uh, in Victoria to, uh, to education so, so sort of both Parsi and Sharon will, will bring some, some some input from a, and, and challenges with some different thoughts from a sort of a wider education uh, pr perspective. Um, Parsi at the moment is uh, the Professor of Education Policy at New, you know, University of New South Wales. So uh, the, the next keynote is uh, from um, Deb Ajengo. And um, Deb is, uh, is based in Alaska. Uh, she's uh, She's basically a wilderness risk management expert, and she'll be uh, presenting to us. She's done a lot of work on um, on the brain science of what happens to us when we're in a in responding to a critical incident event, any sort, and um, um, what are the implications of that for us as outdoor educators if we're responding in in any critical incident. And so her her keynote will be centred around that. Uh, Deb's just an outstanding um, presenter and uh, an educator. Um, she's received, you know, a, a number of international awards for uh, educational leadership. Um, and a lot of you might be familiar with her book, um, Lessons Learned. And if you haven't read that, I'd, I'd recommend it as a, as a really good read, uh, really worthwhile. Um, the, uh, the next keynote is uh, Tim Jarvis and Tim will be speaking to us a lot about sustainability. So Tim is an Australian who's a uh, well recognised adventurer, um, received a number of, uh, of awards for that and uh, a lot of his work has been in the Arctic and an Antarctic. One of the things that he'll be talking to us about is that he did a uh, a repeat of Shackleton's expedition, trying to use the same sort of equipment that Shackleton used back in the day, rather than modern equipment. Uh, one of the things that Shackleton did was to uh, uh, cross seven glaciers um, as he did that. When Tim came to repeat that a few years ago, he simply couldn't do that because some of those glaciers have now disappeared as a result of climate change. And so, um, he has some, uh, some uh, messages about sustainability and how we can, uh, can bring that. He'll, he'll be challenging us about how we can bring that into our program. And obviously crossing glaciers is something that, uh, that he is, isn't able to do for, for most people. So he'll be uh, sort of also presenting on how he was able to try and bring that alive for people. Um, next we... Uh, other uh, keynote is from Canada, Tom, Tom Potter. Um, Tom is, uh, is a wonderful outdoor educator and wonderful human being. And uh, he's done a lot of work on um, investigating and communicating how and why the outdoors has such a, a potent impact on learning. 
on therapy and on wellbeing um, and, um, and how and why uh, students learn well in, in the out of doors. Um, you might have read some of, uh, some of Tom's publications. He's, he's uh, one of the contributing editors to the Journal of Outdoor Experiential, Ed, sorry, the Journal of Experiential Education, the, the uh, American publication that, uh, that many of you might receive. And um, uh, also uh, a recent uh, book called Controversial Issues in Adventure Education. Um, so another one that you might like to get across. Uh, our MC for, for the event is going to be uh, Mark Collard. So I'm sure most Australians have been familiar with Mark's work over the years. Um, over the last couple of decades, uh, he, he will have been at, at many a conference that you've uh, presented. Mark, if, if you're familiar with him, will know the energy that he brings to, uh, to the conference and uh, the way that he's able to engage, engage the audience. So we're really pleased to have Mark on board um, as MC. He's also running a few number of workshops, both before and, and during the, uh, the conference. Um, so he'll be a wonderful asset. Uh, so next, just I'd like to, uh, to talk a little bit about the pre-conference workshops that we're running. So uh, one of them is uh, run in fact by Mark. So these are, these are all three hour workshops. And um, our thought is that given that it's a national conference and most people are flying in from over, over state, we're, we're hoping to get about 250 people. Um, so at least 150 of those would be coming in from interstate. So a lot of them will be flying in um, in the morning, um, perhaps some later in the day. Uh, so we've got some optional workshops sort of while, while that is happening that would be great for uh, particularly uh, good opportunity for, uh, for those of us from New South Wales. So um, Mark will be running um, this workshop. So a lot about uh, engaging people in uh, in practical games, icebreakers, initiatives, um, and how you build that connection and how you follow that through with debriefing and processing. So all of those uh, sort of experiential activities. Then we have um, Parsi and um, Sharon that, that I've been uh, speaking about before, as well as Amanda Lloyd, who is sort of our, one of, well, one of the two leading uh, people in New South Wales on, on nature play. Um, so uh, Amanda in, will be uh, presenting on um, on what uh, nature play initiatives are, are happening in New South Wales. There's some due to be launched around about uh, around, around about the time of the conference. So she'll be bringing us some of the latest information and opportunities. Um, and um, Parsi and, and Sharon will be passing on their, their expertise, sort of as I spoke about earlier before. Um, also really a uh, great practical workshop is the one by um, Claire, Claire Dallet. So um, uh, Claire is uh, uh, the CEO of, uh, of Risk Resolve, um, who some of you might, might have taken advantage of for her um, auditing services. Um, and she'll be actually running like a how-to workshop on how to set up a critical incident scenario um, to test your systems, but also to make uh, effective learning. Um, she'll be uh, using some of the, the work that um, Deborah Jengo presents on, on that brain science, um, what we've got to do for, for really effective learning um, in, in a critical, critical incident. So those are three optional workshops before the, the main conference thing kicks off. So they're, they're from uh, 12.30 through to 3.30. Then there's some afternoon tea for everybody. And uh, then Yvonne will be doing the welcome to country and Parsi the, uh, the first uh, of the keynote presentations. Uh, just before I sort of uh, give you a look at all the concurrent sessions, we've got um, four strands that we'd be running. So one of them is sort of, uh, conversations at the edge, so sort of cutting edge, uh, controversial subjects um, of various nature. Um, 
another strand that sort of centered, I guess, basically about um, risk management and our preparedness to, to deal with, uh, with uh, all those unexpected events that happen um, and how we respond to them, how we, uh, how we get better at it, what the research shows. Um, then um, we've got a strand about uh, learning and leading in the outdoors. Uh, so innovations in curriculum, what the latest curriculum is, um, program design, um, pedagogy, um, all of those sorts of things, and uh, human nature interactions. Um, so uh, with those, so I've partly put that up so that you could have a look at some um, those colour coding before I go to, uh, to show you a little bit about the program and so that I can get it to you at a reasonable scale. What I hope to do then is to uh, just change the slide and bring you to this. And sorry, I'll just fiddle for a moment and get the size at a, a bit right. Forgive me, let's just take a moment while I shuffle it around. So um, hopefully if I can get this now so that it's all, all on the screen for you and readable, I just need to go down one size. So um, concurrent workshops, uh, as you can see that we, we've got a lot of them. Um, so with those colour schemes, once again, the green was for uh, human nature interactions. The uh, this sort of uh, purpley colour is for conversations at the edge, some things and things that might be a bit um, controversial. Uh, the, the white ones are about uh, curriculum and innovations. Um, the blue ones are for uh, sort of that risk management strand, if you like. So um, uh, uh, there are too many of them to go through. Um, you can see going across here, we've got six uh, concurrent sessions running at any one time so that in any time slot you've got a choice of six that might be running and um, and then as, as we go down in a time slot uh, sorry I just need to move that over a little bit don't I so that you can see sorry I'm running on two so it's a little bit can just change that slightly for size, hopefully. So down here, we've got these time slots of, of where you'd be able to look at things. So I think, I guess the first thing to say is that a lot of choice and um, there's too many to highlight, but I'll try and go through in a moment and highlight some. I tend to probably, I'll probably pick out the ones that are most interest perhaps to me. So, uh, uh, but, uh, I think the first thing to notice is that there's a, a lot of variety along along there. I think it's a pretty well balanced program, and as as we go through, you'll see there's there's things along most of those themes, and so you should be able to find things um, for interest uh, that interest you in particular. But just to go through some of them um, and and pick out a few uh, just as a bit of teasers, I guess um, the first one. Uh, here, I think that will be uh, big on everybody's agenda is uh, the um, national uh, curriculum review is just out. And so we've got um, Janice Atkin, who is uh, from uh, been uh, running the, the review for ACARA. So she's from ACHFA and um, she'll be able to um, highlight to you all the things that have, um, that have happened in the, in the latest curriculum. and. Uh, the place of outdoor education um, uh, in the national curriculum. Following that, um, we're looking at some future trends in, um, in outdoor and environmental education. Alongside, we will, in any time bracket, we try and have something that's really um, practical. So here, here is something that's uh, a really creative way of uh, doing, running some uh, practical um, initiative tasks. Uh, 
universities at the moment uh, in the way that they train budding outdoor educators are looking at introducing um, what they call the threshold concept. So there's a lot of, uh, uh, so this is to make people aware and have some input on, on to how our future outdoor educators are going to be, uh, be trained. Just as I pick through, um, looking at some of these, uh, just to, to pick some from the human nature. Here's one that's looking at climate change and, uh, and how we can, what we can do in, uh, to practice climate leadership in, in our own programs. We've got something on nature pay. Um, here we've got something in diversity. Um, so there's a few of the few of those looking at diversity along the, the way. We've got uh, running running throughout the program a whole lot coming from different perspectives on um, on risk management. So uh, Professor Paul Salmon is uh, is there. Uh, he's sort of been a main instigator of the uploads program. So you'll be able to to look at the latest developments in that. Um, and um, we've got a, a bunch of here of academics coming at it from a slightly different um, perspective. These are, um, these are all um, ac academics, mostly there from, uh, if I'm just looking at the names from Victoria and, and, um, and South Australia. Um, We've got some coming from uh, programs, long running programs. So here we've got um, 30 years of programming at, uh, at Glengarry and insights that they've, they've learned along the line from that. Um, similar, similarly here, looking at insights from people um, on sustainability from um, Methodist Ladies College, Marshmead program, um, their, their um, campus there. Uh, as, as I say again, we always try and have something pretty, pretty practical along the line. So for instance, here, we've got some practical tips for instructors in the field on what you do um, on dealing with bushfires. So Paul Bryant uh, runs an outdoor education center, but also brings experience as the captain of his uh, volunteer fire brigade and a member of remote area firefighting team that heli get helicoptered into remote areas to fight fires. Mark Collard running practical sessions out outside on uh, debriefing. And similarly down the line, so with, without going into them all, but um, We, we come from all sorts of angles and directions. So for instance, here is, um, is uh, something from Tony Keeble about indigenous education. Um, we've got more things about environmental ability and sustainability. We've got things here by Paul Tame about building employee retention and resilience. Um, somewhere I probably flicked past it uh, but uh, so I think it'll be on the day before, but um, in terms of um, building up skills within your staff, there'll be a presentation by Liz Horn from Skills IQ on, uh, um, on the AAAS. Um, so whether you're sort of leading an organization or an instructor, or you're uh, coming from a wider perspective, you know, Peak bodies. Um, what are they? How are they doing uh, during a crisis? And and how do we deal with crises? Uh, for those there that are interested in introducing technology in the outdoors, we've got a couple of technology updates along the line. Um, Here from Catherine Allman, we've got um, response to the env current environmental crisis um, within our curriculum and what we do in the program. The only repeat you might notice is this one. So um, 
Janice Atkin, who's been doing the uh, review of the curriculum for those people that can't get to it on the first day, we're running an abbreviated session there because we feel it's really important for everybody to, to catch up on that. Next to that, I can see one um, on innovations and bringing differences into our program. So throughout the program, um, I think there's a lot of variety and hopefully that's given you a bit of a, a, a taste of what there is. Um, but for instance, in, uh, in this time block here of whatever that is, an hour and a half, there's some or 15 presentations um, for you to choose from that uh, I'm sure everybody will be able to find three that, that really interest them. So if I can just change my screen there and go back to this one for a moment and just finish off there. So uh, I guess the last thing to mention is that uh, a bit of a tradition in the in the national conferences is that one of the things that we always want to do is to uh, be practical and uh, walk the talk and do things in the outdoors. And so um, on the so the main conference body will run on the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, the 28th, 29th, and 30th of September, and then on Friday, the 1st of October, we've got an outdoors in action day. And uh, so once again, this is, this is another optional activity for people to do. Um, and uh, we're trying to showcase, I guess, the Blue Mountains in some ways. So in the Blueies, we'll, we'll be running a, a session on uh, that involves some mountain biking, some canyoning, some vertical rescue, and also a nature work, walk with an Indigenous um, ranger. Um, and then uh, we've got site visits to, uh, to Barker uh, College, the Grange uh, is their outdoor campus up in Mount Victoria. So theirs is a sort of an environmental and outdoor education campus. And uh, then to move on to the Colo Outdoor Education Centre um, and, um, and do a site visit there. So to, to look at uh, their site and their program, um, but uh, also just to establish some contacts. Uh, so when I've done these site visits in the past, one of the great things has just been the, the bus journey to these places and to talk to, uh, to people that are running centres from all over the country and uh, to network and, and, um, and to share ideas there as well, well as the formal part of it. And then um, finally, um, particularly for our interstate uh, visitors, um, pack rafting is one of the, the sort of new activities that opens up all sorts of activities. A lot of our um, international, or oh, sorry, interstate um, visitors won't, uh, don't get the chance to get to the, the Penrith Whitewater Stadium. So um, we'll, we'll be having some, uh, doing a session there and, and giving, giving people a, a chance to, to, uh, to paddle the, uh, the Olympic course. So at this stage, I'd like to open up to, uh, to questions from anybody. So um, uh, if you'd like to unmute yourself and fire away, I don't know if anything's come through on chat, Liz. Uh, no, nothing's come through on chat. Oh, Brendan has momentarily um, went unmute and then has gone back to mute. Right, okay. Okay, so just while I give a moment for that to happen, I'll just end this side show. And start this one. So uh, no questions coming in. Um, so I'll just move, uh, and also Liz, just giving you the opportunity as a conference organizing committee uh, member. Um, is there anything that you'd like to add to those things that I've, I've mentioned so far? No, no, I think you covered it really well, Mark. I think the, the really interesting and exciting thing um, for me is that we've got some new names 
um, new presenters with new information that are coming through. Um, and that's a really exciting time for our industry where people who are um, practicing out there, learning things, are, are moving to a space that they're um, wanting to share their learnings and, and continue to grow um, as, as the outdoors uh, field. So I think that's a wonderful opportunity. Um, I'm looking forward to it. And then uh, one of the things that I had intended to mention and then, uh, and then forgot as I, I was through was in fact the, uh, uh, one of the things that Liz will be facilitating on, on the second day of the conference, given that the, uh, the huge couple of years that we've, uh, we've gone through with uh, f floods, uh, so it was bushfires first, then floods, then COVID, um, then we got hit by some more floods. Um, so it's been a, a huge uh, time, and uh, we, we think this is uh, why uh, why running the conference now is, is such a good time for us to be um, reconnecting. Um, but there's obviously a huge amount of learning to come out of our experience of the past 18 months. So um, there are a number of uh, workshops during the concurrent sessions that focus on, on learnings that come out of that. We're also running a, a, a wide forum at, uh, with an expert panel. This will actually be facilitating the panel discussion. Uh, so we'll have a, a few experts up on the couch um, and, um, and sharing their insights from a whole bunch of different perspectives. So leaders of, uh, of large organisations, um, a whole gamut running running right through um, and uh, we're hoping for instance that perhaps we might be able to get Shane Fitzsimmons there to to bring in some of uh, what uh, Resilience New South Wales has learned from it and um, uh, so there'll be a number of experts giving their opinions and then uh, and then opening it up to the floor and, and have a, a wide discussion so that hopefully uh, from uh, given that we've got about 250 people from around Australia. Hopefully we can really share and, um, um, and I think that will be a great session. Um, so if there are no further questions, uh, I'll um, just move on then to uh, some reminders and quick updates from, um, from Laurie and, uh, and Leslie. So I forgot to, uh, at the beginning of the, the session to, uh, present once again their apologies. They were offered an intensive uh, protect, uh, professional development workshop yesterday and, um, and, uh, and today, in fact. So, um, so you, you've seen those screens on, uh, those things on the screen for a little while. So um, all those uh, nominations there and, and surveys are open. So just a reminder about those. All of these will also be coming out in the newsletter that comes out on Monday. So um, all of that will be there. Um, Liz will be very keen for you to look at the audit from last week, no doubt, I'm sure. <laughs> um, also now available, we've got the severe weather guidance um, information that's been out. So uh, that's really uh, um, worthwhile. Um, if you're not across that yet, a reminder that's available on, on our website. Um, also, we've got this uh, pilot project um, that's, uh, that's about to take place. So there's an update on that. Um, we're doing that in uh, partnership with a couple of other people, um, particularly National Parks and Wildlife Service so, and, uh, and the EPA. Um, so uh, there's, uh, there's that, that information for you on that. And um, speaking about the curriculum review um, a little bit uh, in in that uh, in terms of what's happening at the national conference the last stages of that are happening at the moment so it's been through sev several stages of the, the process and it's open for um, public feedback at the moment so um, uh, if you if you haven't given feedback in stages one or two um, there's there's that available for you at the moment and um, then the, there's uh, just a reminder about these uh, connect and, and shares. So um, 
all of those events on the screen. I'll, while I run through them all, you, you can have uh, see those in, in front of you. Um, and a reminder that those, those will also be in the newsletter that's due to come out on Monday. Um, probably, perhaps the uh, the ones that are, uh, you know, I, maybe I should be highlighting is this great gr grant opportunity. Um, it's always um, hard to pass up any grant opportunity or we're always looking for some money. Uh, traineeships opportunity, obviously very important and, and this summit that's coming up as well. So um, um, that national forum um, should be quite an important one. Um, hopefully we, we're going to be able to follow up with some of that at the national conference as well. So um, I think that is at an end and um, um, waste any time, anybody's time. Um, we're all busy people. Um, we'll, we'll call it at this stage, unless unless there are any last minute questions from anybody. And one last chance for for Liz to to throw any any additional things in that I haven't thought of. Mark, you've been very thorough. So I think um, people could have an early mark today. Um, I noticed that Lachlan's only just joined. Um, the conversation. So Lachlan, um, sorry, we're just about to finish up, uh, but this has been recorded, so will be available on um, the Outdoors New South Wales AT ACT um, YouTube channel. Yeah, wonderful. So thanks every much, everybody for your time uh, today. Um, I'm going to stop the recording in a moment. Hang on a minute. But, uh, That's all right. Yep. Uh, Lachlan um, had just oh, unmuted. I don't know what happened there. Oh, sh you can hear me now, Liz? Yeah, yeah. Lachlan had yeah. just unmuted, so I wasn't right. sure whether he was going to say something or not. Oh, oh okay. there's, Les there's Leslie and, and uh, Laurie. Um, yeah, great. So um, so we're just about to uh, to finish up here, Leslie and Laurie. Uh, I'm about to stop the recording, but, but I'll actually hang around on Zoom in case anybody has sort of any informal questions that they'd like to ask. And, uh, and do you have a chance to hang around for a moment, Leslie and Laurie? Yeah, we've just broken for, oh, I don't, yes, we've okay. just broken for morning tea. So we've got time just to hang around in case anyone wants to chat. Yeah, terrific. So, um, I'll, I'll stop the recording and uh, we'll continue an informal chat in a few moments. Thanks everybody and, and bye. Thanks Mark. <laughs>